Do you feel like you are the best point guard to come out of Oak Hill? I'm the best guard. Shit. Okay. Oh, out. okay. Oak Hill. Okay. I, I believe I'm the best guard to ever come out of Oak Hill. Talk just, your shit, bro. Yeah, just rolling out the ball. Yeah, I'm the best guard ever. Top five draft classes. Y'all gotta be. I mean, look at it. They might be top five draft class, to be honest. Nigga, look like they three. They, yeah. Look, yeah. I, I take that. Yeah. I say, we yeah. just look at it, though. Yeah. Like, I take it back. I say top eight. I, I get them top three. You know, that was one of the reasons. You know, I had to walk away from the game too because wow. of family and friends. Just, it, it got too too much about money. Basketball is my freedom and basketball is my therapy. So when I'm between those lines, I'm not thinking about anything. Yeah. Um, but once basketball becomes a job, when people look at you as, you know, a job and- ATM. You know, yeah, ATM, then, you know, it kind of gets like depressing. I mean, no matter who you are, like, yeah, you know, like true. you don't want to be looked at as, you know, like a cash cow, so. There's a few things that you said, that's out of pocket, bro. Uh, I don't have MJ in my top five. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the greatest podcast ever above the rim with Dwight Howard, where we hear no evil, see no evil, and speak, speak no, no evil. evil. We got another crazy, crazy episode for you guys yes, today. One of the best, come on, the best high school ballers ever. He changed the game, the AI of high school. We're going to get into that in a minute, but... We got a crazy guest for y'all today. Oh my God, before we do anything, we need y'all to hit that subscribe button. Uh, like, comment. 90, 96% of the 96%, people that's watching. Yeah, it's a lot Come of on, people bro. watching, but y'all not liking or hitting that subscribe button. Up, bro. So y'all got to hit it, because if y'all do, I just got back from the Philippines, and I met the governor of the Philippines, and he got these... Gold bars. Gold bars. Gold bars. And he made me these special gold emblems for the. Nigga, where, where was I? You didn't see all that gold I was posting, nigga? Nah. What the fuck was I? Y'all niggas was getting gold. What the fuck? Y'all niggas getting paid in gold now? Shit. Shit. Back pockets is crazy. He oh caught his my God. He caught his ass. <laughs> He I got it. you too. Nah, nah, nigga, nigga, I'm not yes, me. I, I did. What are you talking about? about? <laughs> no, nah, but anyway, I got all y'all at home. Anyway, go like, subscribe, <laughs> hit the subscribe button. Oh, he shit, got I'm all the, the gold yeah, patties. Yeah. He just gave me one. But like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you're thinking about the show, who y'all want to see on, what y'all, what kind of questions y'all want us to ask the guests. You know, cause we it's about to get it's about to get for real. Hey man, look, we got once again. I'm gonna double down. <laughs> We got one of the best basketball players out of high school. One of the best California guards. Fuck Los Angeles. Ever. California. Nigga, Sacramento. Nigga, LA. Dago. Everywhere. The last podcast we did, we had Boogie. We had we had uh, my boy Quinn. Shout out to Boogie and Quinn. Shout out to Boogie and Quinn. We gonna start it from the top. We, we, we gonna get to his, your origin stories. But nigga, we about to set the record straight. Well, I, I'm about to set, set the record straight. Set it straight. Tonight. We talked about best Basketball players, best point guards coming out of Oak Hill. A lot of niggas said BJ. A lot of people said Rondo. I'm going to keep it a bean. I'm going to say it again. Brandon Jennings is the best high school basketball player to ever put on an Oak Hill jersey. Period. Number one basketball player Period. in the country. Period. Gumpy. Lefty. Right. Nigga was 120 pounds soaking wet. Giving niggas 35. <laughs> senior year, 35. And he is on the day. Come he on, coming man. on the show. Come on, man. He finna talk about it. Come on, man. Everything. We finna go into it. So, so man, welcome. Yes, sir. DJ is to the man, show. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for having yes, me, Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. He got you. some amazing stuff going on. Tough crowd is going crazy, and he, y'all. he came through bearing gifts, too, bro. He, so yes, the, he the did. The candles was tough. The hat, yeah. the, the swimming trunks, bro. I, we appreciate it, And bro. the crazy oh, part God. about yes, it is everybody know that I love candles, and he bought some of the, like, listen, you guys. Y'all got to check out his shit. It smells amazing, nigga. It smells so good, for real. <laughs> no, no thank bullshit. You. Thank you. you know shout out to Monty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. shout, shout out to Check him out, man. Check him out. So, so we know you as, you know, Brandon Jennings coming out of Los Angeles, right? Um, tell us the backstory about you You in L.A., you coming up, all the greats before you, right? You come up the same time as mm-hmm. DeMar DeRozan, mm-hmm. coming up the same time as James Harden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the scene like? In Los Angeles at the time, you coming up trying to be one of the best in the country. I mean, the L.A. scene was crazy during that time. Um, you know, you had James Harden with Pump and Run. 
Um, you had Drew Holiday over there. You had myself with SEA. Yep. Uh, DeMar was doing his own thing. Um, but, man, it was just, it, you know, it, it's small, but we were spread out, you know. Um, and, you know, it was a lot of rivals, you know, a lot of rivals. You know, I went to Dominguez. You had James at Artesia. You had DeMar at Compton. You had uh, Drew Holiday at Campbell Hall. So uh, we were spread out, but, I mean, it was it was very hostile. It was very hostile times. But it was good times, though. Yeah. Good times. You, you broke up a story, bro. We got we got to start from here. Eighth grade, he said he was in Las Vegas, and he said his first time watching Dwight play for the Atlanta Celtics yeah. was yeah. crazy, bro. First of all, Dwight, that's probably one of the best AU teams of all time, bro. I believe so. Yeah. Uh, we got to be top top three. Yeah, I'd say top, top three. Yeah, you top said three. on Gills Arena, though, SCA was number one all time. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we went 38. Like, I mean, we went 38 no. Damn. In one summer, we never we never lost. Did y'all niggas go 38? Did y'all niggas go 38 no? I think it was it was one team that beat us in our whole AAU like run. Who, who was, was on that uh, team? It was a pump and run. It's a pump and run team. Pump and run? <laughs> yeah, it was a team with uh what's the guy name from Mexico? It was the center. He went to UCLA. Mm. Mexico, <clears throat> yeah, he from Mexico. Crazy looking center, I, like he he don't. Dan guys, are, no, he don't I do nothing. He don't do nothing great, but yeah. he do everything good. Like he's a real solid player. I I, I, he, I know he two Mexican do. players that made the NBA. I'm about to say, nigga, I don't think of one Mexican player. Now, I, don't, made the NBA. I don't know if the he made it is. to the to the uh, NBA. Oh, That's uh, but I know he played at uh, UCLA. Okay. We played with him with Pump and Run. They had Jordan Farmer on their team at the time. Jordan Farmer was a Hoover. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I, I want to say we top three. And let's get back to who we was talking about, number one. No, 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 for sure. But 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 talk about that that <coughs> experience, you being in eighth grade, seeing them battle. Like, what was that like? Yeah, I, I had just came back from uh, AAU Nationals. You know, at that time, I think it was in – I think we'll say Orlando, Florida, or Memphis. Yeah. And uh, I just remember you guys were in Vegas for the big time tournament under Sunny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was playing in one of those gyms in Vegas. I just remember seeing you, Josh Smith. Um, who else was on it? Brandon Rush. Randolph, Brandon <laughs> Rush, Rush, Javar Rush. Scrinton. Yeah, just – and I was just like, yo, this is high school. Like this is <laughs> yeah. like this is high school. Like, though, this he's going to the NBA next year. Like, that's a grown man. But now, nah, man, just seeing y'all just inspired me. I was like, bro, I can't wait for my time, like my my chance. Your time. And, you know, when my time come, like one to, you know, be at the big time tournament, go to A B C D camp. Yeah. Like that was just by watching y'all. So, man, y'all was so inspiring back then. Bro, you took over. Like you took over after that. So <laughs> like Coming up, how did that like what what triggered you to like wanna be that that guy? Like mm -hmm. it, it gotta be something in you. Was it somebody uh like who said something because I know we was talking to Gil, we've been talking to a lot of a lot of players. It's been like one person yeah. who's mm -hmm. done said something to you that woke that monster up inside of you and mm -hmm. then from then on it was like you was a killer. Man, I I gotta say, man, when I saw uh, through the fire, through the fire, Sebastian yeah, Telfair. Sebastian Telfair. 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 that was a yeah. hell of a yeah. yeah like yeah, when bro. I seen like when I seen that on ESPN, like that really just woke me up. Like I was like, yeah. Yo, I want like I want this type of hype. I want this fame. I want this love. Um, even when you and Sebastian came to uh, UCLA and played, yeah, yeah. you know, like meeting y'all in the back. I was young, but you know, I was young in the back with the with, <laughs> with the, the NBA the, patches yeah. on my jeans and stuff <laughs> in the eighth grade with my throwback that was the jersey. Classic shorts you know, on you, my mama. If you, you know, have a pair of those, yeah. <laughs> You can tell we getting old. No, yeah. it's coming. It's coming back around, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it is. It's, no bullshit. It's, I'm yeah. looking for a pair right now. Yeah, with my throwback jersey. So, but just seeing y'all, seeing all the love in high school, it was like, yo, this is high school love. Like, y'all not even in the NBA yet. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, nah, that really woke me up. Seeing y'all on Slam magazines, um, you know, um, you know, wanting to be, you know, one on, on the Slam punks and all that stuff. So all that, all that, just watching you guys just woke woke everything up for me. And so, then and then getting a the tape from Kenny Anderson. So when did you Eighth start grade. hooping, like taking it serious? I have to say, when I came back and won the national uh, championship in eighth, uh, seventh grade. Seventh grade. When I came back and so, that's when so, I knew I had a chance, like to really. Oh, about to say, so nigga, you weren't taking it serious when you was winning. You weren't taking it serious, so you took it serious after you won. That's when you got like opened your eyes to like, yo, I might be one of the ones. <clears throat> yeah. So at that time, were you already locked in with Tyson Chandler, like from him being in high school and, and yeah. you being around Tyson? Yeah, I was already. Yeah, I met Tyson when I was like ten. Like ten or eleven, he was already at uh, Dominguez. 
So you went to the, the we played Dominguez in some tournament out here when I was in my high school team. How was that experience? Cause like when we played it, we was like, God, Lee, these dudes is like grown. We thought they was grown men mm-hmm. to us. Mm-hmm. And, and people thinking I'm grown man. Right, you looking like, at these hey, niggas. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, so how like, how was that experience? Man, first, for, I'm gonna go on record and say this: Dominguez is the most feared high school basketball <laughs> program ever in Los Angeles. Off the court or on the court? Both. <laughs> both. Yeah, both. I was about to say. Both. It's both. all like them niggas about yeah, like, to out there. Gotta be. Like just like <laughs> from you know, Tayshawn Prince, um, you know Kenny Bruner, Tyson Chandler, myself. You know, a lot of great guys that came through there. But that basketball program right there is, like, the most feared. And there will never be another high school basketball program like that ever in L.A. That's feared. Like, like on and off. Like, like basketball edition type shit. Yeah, like, we, like, yeah, like on the court, we're going to beat your ass. And off the court, we're going <laughs> to yeah. beat your ass. Like, it was so like that. Either we're we going we gonna to win regardless. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, we yeah, win yeah, after yeah, the yeah, game, yeah, nigga, yeah, yeah, regardless. That's crazy. So, but no, growing up in that atmosphere, seeing Tyson Chandler – you know, first person I ever seen have an Escalade in high school. You know Dang. what I'm saying? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, coming through. Yeah, like sure. he was, you know, yeah. he was the he was guy. Crazy. Yeah, like he was the guy. Like he was like the hero. So seeing yeah, that. Now you, now you know why he won the defensive player of the year. Yeah. Over He's still mad about that. He's still mad about that. Yeah. 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 What I tell you, Moo <laughs> Cam. Moo <laughs> Cam, you got to have something like that for Moo. He trying to act like he not hurt. <laughs> no, I'm good. I love Tyson. Hey, but look. So when your AAU team traveling and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You from Cali? The, the most NBA players came out of Cali. What was the toughest city, besides the toughest state besides you know, you, Cali? You, you know what he's trying to do, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let like, like like him try to do it. I'm gonna let him try to do it. I know where he going. The ho- the toughest. <laughs> where the Please, toughest bro. hoopers come if from? This but it's nigga not Cali. Knows- Hey, bro. If, if, all right, well, just, I mean, to me, because, you know, a lot of people say, like, you know, I'm more of an East Coast guard. Oh, so, fuck. So, I, I definitely got to go New York. Thank God. Thank The nigga was close, okay. bro. Okay. Was, all right, go ahead. I'm over yeah. that. Um, yeah, you sure. know, you know just because, you know. I, I can see him being a New York guard, like a tiny Archibald. Yeah, that's why I said Kenny. <laughs> nigga, tiny Archibald. <laughs> no, tiny Archibald's left-handed. Tiny yeah, Archibald's yeah. left-handed, bro. Oh, Come bro. on, you got to know basketball. No, it's, not, it's not about that, though. Kenny though. Anderson was Kenny nice. Anderson is more his style than tiny Archibald. Tiny Archibald was nice. Nice. I'm I ain't say the nigga. I ain't say he went nice, bro. <laughs> I ain't say nigga went nice. All right, all time starting five of Cali. This this hard because a lot of players that came out of Cali. Yeah, all time starting five. You can be in it if you want to be. Starting five all time. Well, I'm gonna put Tyson Chandler at, at my center. Okay. Damn. Um. All time. That's, who Cali got. That's, that's a lot of niggas. Who Cali got. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of. I mean, you if, if, if you would have said LA, you got to break been, it down. Like I do say, LA. Do yeah, LA. Say LA or something. Yeah, because if you say California, then I got to go Jason Kidd at the one. Too, right. Do LA. LA? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Baron at the one. Mm. Uh, he's, he's tough. Um, I'm going to go Tyson Chandler at my center. Okay. Um. I'm going Paul Pierce. Oh, okay. Yeah, his team ain't beating my team. Yo, yo Jersey team? No. Oh, hold on, they got a fire it's squad. Let them finish. Let them finish. Let them finish. Let them finish. Let you got Let them finish. Let them got Let them finish. Let them finish. Let them finish. Let them finish. Let them James. Let them finish. Let Let's go Kawhi Leonard. No. Oh, Damn, shit. yeah, Kawhi. I was going to say DeMar, but yeah, I forgot about Kawhi. That's a tough five. That's a, tough That's a great five, bro. That's a great five. What a, so you talk up a lot about AAU. But what a lot of people don't know is not only did you play uh, AAU for that team, but you also played for Master P's AAU team. Yeah. Oh. So like a lot of people don't know that. So yeah. like at that point in time, Master P was like him. Mm-hmm. So you got a chance to be around P, mm-hmm. hoop with P, probably hoop with Romeo. Like what was that like in that spot? Like like being around him at that time. And did yes. you play with? Demar when he was on that team too. Yeah, it was me, Demar. Uh, we and that's when we had ran into uh, Tariq Evans. That's when mm. we found out who Tariq Evans was for the first time. <laughs> Shout Whoa, out Tariq bro. Evans. Um, but yeah, nah, man, that was that was dope. Being <clears throat> young, playing playing with Master P, um, you know, being on Nickelodeon, just getting that that star power yeah. was dope at a young age. And like I said, after seeing you guys um, in the uh, when I was in the seventh grade playing, then playing with Master P, it was like you know it was. It was like it was meant to be. Yeah, it was, it was meant like to you be. Had to go, yeah. How was that like watching Master P and 
you know, what he did for not only his kids, but that whole no limit and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Did that inspire you to want to do like the tough crowd and everything that you're doing off the court? Yeah, well, Master P was very family. So yeah. like, you know, that's one thing I did love about him. Like, man, it'd be like 30, 40, 50 people. Everybody, come on. Like everybody getting shoes, everybody getting, like we going through that's the tough. mall. Like it was like, you know, coming from a single parent mother home. Like he, like that was like, damn, yeah. man, I'm with Master P, bro. Like we going to Foot Locker. Like he taking us on a boat, going fishing. Like we was on all type of just stuff that I've never done before. So, um, but definitely like, you know, seeing his, the way he was with his family and starting his brand. I mean, definitely, yeah, that definitely yeah. clicked in. So, so you at Dominguez, then you made the decision to transfer to Oak Hill. Yeah. Right? And we know that you said that you made that transition to Oak Hill because you felt like it was too easy to keep it a bean, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, now I'm, I'm going to come on to action. We talked about this earlier yeah. at Gill Spot. But just for reference, I wrote down some names so y'all can get an understanding, right? Oak Hill is a, is a very historic school. Since the 90s, it's been a basketball factory getting players to the league. I'm That's talking true. point guard mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hit everyone. But just some household names that y'all probably know. We got Ty Lawson, Nolan Smith, Rod Strickland, Steve Blake, Rajon Rondo. Dang. Do you feel like, and, and I'm missing guys too, by the way. I'm, I'm openly saying I, I just got a few just so y'all can understand how many point guards. That's not including JR. That's not including KD. That's not including Carmelo Anthony. That's not including a lot of guys that play. Do you feel like you are the best point guard to come out of Oak Hill? I'm not the best point guard. I'm the best guard. Shit. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 I'm, I I believe I'm the best guard to ever come out of Oak Hill. Talk just, your shit, bro. Yeah, just rolling out the ball. Yeah, I'm the best guard ever. All right, now, 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 now. For, that's what I. That's what I said. All right, so thirty five a why? game. Why? T- tell niggas why, bro. Thirty five a game. Thirty five point five to be exact. At Oak Hill. Naismith, and and I was also a Naismith Player of the Year. That's National uh, schedule. What's your take though? Because when Boogie and Quinn was talking about it, they saying like Rondo style of play. You know, you a scorer. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Rondo, a whole different type of player. So maybe yeah. you like to that's play why, with yeah, Rondo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said Rondo, the point guard. Yes, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I am I just feel like I'm a better guard than any of them. Like, just a guard. Just. I mean, he averaged 35. Bro. Nigga averaged 35. With national schedule. So, yeah, for sure. y'all Everybody going against the best team. The best of the best. You putting up 35 of the best of the best. And I ain't trying to make. BJ, you was like 110, nigga, in high school, right? I'm going to keep yeah. it a bean, bro. You're yeah. like 110. Yeah. A nigga, 6'1. Averaging 35, you're 110 pounds, bro. There's no other way but to be. Allen Iverson of, of, of high school. There's no other way. Of, of yeah, the only player the only player I was worried about in high school was Tariq Evans. He like, was that cold. Like, like Tariq Evans, 6'5". Remember, he, remember, he was that remember his rookie year he came in? I know how cold he was. 25 and 5. Rookie year was crazy. Like, like, he was 6'4", six, 6'5", six, point guard. What, what What's those practices like at an Oak Hill, right? Because – a lot of people don't understand how Oak Hill is set up. Yeah. It's set up to where it's in the middle of nowhere, obviously. Yeah. It's no distraction, so it's only basketball. But more importantly, you're in an environment where it's iron sharp and iron, bro. Mm-hmm. It's n- the worst thing on the team would probably give an average high school kid 30. Yeah. So you're in a situation where you got to be one of the ones. You left averaging 35. So yeah. how competitive was it and what was it like? Bro, my first day at Oak Hill, I, I ain't going to never – I came from My first day at Oak Hill, Nolan Smith, bro, woke me up. Bro, like, cause he was already there before me, so, um, you know, I, I wasn't used to getting up at five, six o'clock in the morning, like going to work out, lifting, and you know, I just remember his first couple weeks in practice, Nolan's just dominating practice, like, you know, he's been here before, yeah, so yeah. he's coming off of losing to, uh, you know, KD and them the year yeah. before, and you know, he coming back on vengeance, so, you know, Nolan really got me, you know, um, you know, m- more in like a better, mo- you know, mode, and you know, just mood and. Uh, as far as the game of basketball. So just watching him every day, uh, being with him in the gym, he really woke me up, though. Like, like Nolan was the, the one to get me going. Was practices and stuff like like NBA style? Yeah, I mean, everybody can play. Yeah. So it's not like Coach Smith, he ain't walking in there. He not yelling. <laughs> he not doing none of that. It's like, bro, if you want to be here, you want to be here. He not finna beg you to play. Like yeah. you walking in, you looking at the wall. And you know what I'm saying? You got you got Steven Jackson. You got Melo. You got Steve Blake. <clears throat> like you know, so you got all these guys. He ain't, you know. It's like yo, we hooping. Yeah. Like we hooping yeah. every day, and yeah. we got all the scouts in there. So you know, a lot of five on five pinning some plays. But I mean, other than that, you know, you hooping. You got to be ready to go. And yeah, he getting thirty five. That's what I'm saying, bro. Thirty five. But we got access to the. What was your career high then? 
You average thirty five. Yeah, it had to be like fifty five. Uh, what the oh my in, 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 in Oak Hill. Uh, I had 63 and he took me out with four minutes to go on the fourth. That's Damn, fucking crazy. They should have let you go. That's for fucking 80. crazy. And that was the year I think Kobe had like 81. Remember, Kobe was on that yeah. run, like he was going yeah. crazy. I was so hot. I was like, Come on, that's bro. crazy. That's how, crazy how does it feel to be a scorer like that? Like, as a big for me, me coming down dunking on folks is like a thrill, yeah. but for you, like. How was that thrill of coming down, putting somebody yeah, in the uh -huh. blender, and you know they can't do nothing about it, then splashing the three, like you know stuff like that. Yeah. Bigs wish <laughs> for those moments, yeah. like for real. Like, yeah, like I, a heat check, like coming down hitting three. Yeah, in the coming down yeah. hitting threes, looking at the crowd going yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like, how does that feel, bro? That's, I mean, man, that's, man, that's what that right there gets me going. Yeah. Like, you know, when you come down, hit one, hit two, and then you hit a heat check, and then, you know, you pump in your chest, so you're yeah. looking at the crowd. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, it's just the love of the game. Like, that's just our, you know, I don't know. I think we'll give you that nod for me, bro. It wasn't just, like, the swag on the court, but it was the swag off the court. Nigga came through with a Gumby, bro. You know how much confidence you got to have to pull off a Gumby? Keep it move. Come on, bro. Keep it a big, Moo bro. had a Gumby? Moo, that's why I, that's why I went to move. Nah. Bro, you know how much confidence you got to have to pull off a Gumby and you hooping and you talking crazy to niggas? Like, and that I swag that you came with, nobody seen it. Was that just self-installed confidence of, I'm going to rock out, I'm going to wear what I want to wear, I'm going to do my own thing, I'm going to be a trailblazer? Yeah, it was just from, you know, the guys that inspired me. Like I said, I'm looking at... You, I'm looking at Sebastian Telfer, I'm looking at LeBron, I'm looking at all you guys before us in high school, and it's like, yo, I want tattoos. Like, I want I want yeah. the spotlight. So you had to be different. And I knew if yeah. I wanted to shine, I had to be different. So I always wanted to do things my own way. So that process going to, like, college or not going to college, going overseas and everything, what was the this, what was the reasoning behind the decision? Uh, Well, I always say my SAT. They flagged it a couple of times. Um <clears throat> But then also, you know, Luke Olsen had retired mm -hmm. um, that year at Arizona. Yeah. So I was supposed to go to Arizona with Joe Bayless, Chase Budinger, and Jordan Hill. It was, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be. Fire yeah. squad. But, but, but I, also, I also heard that, that you was originally supposed to go to USC. Nobody ever talked about that, though. Yeah, so why you never why you never talk about that part? You always gloss over that though, bro. Man, so so I verbally committed to, yeah. to, to USC first. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. You always go straight to Arizona. You never I always wonder why this nigga never talk about USC? Cause where on the street was, it was yeah. USC first before Arizona. Yeah, because they had Tim Floyd there. Right. Okay. So I just felt like I just got kind of just like forced into doing it. Like, you know, I was at home, so they was like, yo, verbally committed. OJ Mel was going there. Yeah, so oh, everybody so everybody you know, was jumping. Everybody crazy. was jumping on ship. So then I remember Tim Floyd coming up to Oak Hill, right? He drove on down to Oak Hill, and um, we was just talking. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, go anymore. Um, and then he just, and I never just heard from him again. So it was kind of like, <laughs> oh, it was like a better, but, but that's because I was supposed to go to UConn. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah. 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 See, see, this is, yeah. all right, so, so UConn I know was what he did. He was just like, man, fuck it. I'm going to just skip all them motherfuckers. For everybody watching, nigga, this is the, this is what happens when you number one. You know, Dwight, you the number one player that's in the country. Hard, that's a hard uh, decision to make. Hell yeah. Trying to figure out what school you want to go to, who you want to play with. You got so many different options. What's gonna be the best option for you? And I think he did. And he did the best thing. Like, how, yeah. you chose to go overseas in a time where people was like, it, it's unheard of. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was unheard of. Like, it, it take a lot of belief in yourself to want to do something like that. Like, that's like it was so crazy that you did that. And I think that was the best thing you could have did because it put so many eyes on you. More than what the eyes that was already on you, yeah. Like how, like what, what was that process like of saying, you know, well, I ain't going this route. My coach is not coming there no more. So I'ma just, mm -hmm. I'ma go all the way overseas and throw everybody off. Uh, Sonny Vaccaro. Sonny Vaccaro, yeah, y'all. You know, know the, the, you know the guy. I you know, know, Sonny. I know, exactly know Sonny. <laughs> Sonny. The same guy who founded ABCD camp? The same yeah, guy who the got Godfather. Michael Jordan the Nike deal? We call him the Godfather. Right? Is that, that, that Sonny Vaccaro? Because I, I, I know Sonny Vaccaro. Yeah. But 
Nah, you don't know, know that nigga. Just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never met him, but I'm just saying I know the work he's no done. Oven. I know the work he's done. Oh, I thought you really talking about you knew. Him. No, no, not him. You like her shit walking on everybody. I'm saying though, look though, for the audience who don't know, because for you to link up <laughs> with Sonny Vaccaro out of high school, Sonny Vaccaro founded ABCD Camp, which was at the time the biggest the showcase biggest for high showcase. school basketball. The round ball classic too. Round yes, ball classic in Vegas. And yes. he was responsible for getting Mike the Nike deal. It will be no Air Jordan without him. So for him to see value in you coming out of high school, bro, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. Did, did money drive the decision too? Like, got to get the money faster? I mean, no, it wasn't money. It was just I, I wanted to make sure I was playing next year. Like, I was the number yeah. one player in the country and – you know, I'm about to sit out a year because of a test score or because, you know, I couldn't go to summer school. So I just wanted to make sure I could play. It was like, Italy, right? Yeah, Rome, Italy. Yeah. So How we went to – it was dope. So it happened so fast, right? So I graduated from school. I went to uh, New Jersey. I was hanging out with uh, M. Will uh, up in New Jersey. That's when he was uh, – Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in Jersey. I was uh, with Joe and uh, with, uh, Joe Buns, and I was with uh, Marcus for like a month. And we was all trying to figure out what I was going to do. So then I flew to Vegas with Sonny um, in like a span of two weeks. I had two workouts at, uh, what's that, Impact? Yeah. You know, yeah, Impact, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so when Joe just started it, and we had the small the little gym. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm in there, J.R. Smith in there. We in there hooping. Um, I'm fresh out of high school. I'm cooking. Like, I'm like, okay, like, I got a chance. So, it was three teams that wanted me. I was either going to go to Israel. I was going to go to Turkey. Uh, no, it was it Turkey? Spain. And then uh, Rome. Mm -hmm. So, Israel was out. My mom was like, hell no. that shit is out. She was like, that's out. And then Spain, because Rubio was there, they was like, nah. Like, because yeah. Rubio was there. So, they was like, nah, go to Rome, Italy. So, I met with Dan Bodoroda. You know Dan who did the the uh well they call it the sham guy, but you know mm -hmm. like Oh that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, he hit Mellow with it. So I signed to him, oh, uh, his team geez. back then. Um yeah, man. Signed me for a year. Uh I signed to him for like five hundred K and then got with Undarmer and then we set it off. How did that yeah, no, go ahead. No, no. Like, how he say that shit? He's sweeping under a yeah, rug he like that. It, like like it was nothing. Nigga, like, was how, the first <laughs> come on, athlete, man. the first basketball yeah. player to sign with Under Armour. You were the first Under Armour signature basketball shoe, bro. Number yeah. one. Yeah. Number so one. So you can't sweep that under the rug like, yeah, now nah, sign up. Nigga. Yeah, like, how does that feel? Like, bro, like, you were. Pioneer. Trailblazer. Come on, man. You were trailblazer. I don't think, like, I don't think you guys at home understand wherever you're watching this. This man was the shit. He's still the shit. Facts. But coming out of high school, this man had an Under Armour deal, and he was the first player to before do Kimba, that. Before Kimba. Before anybody. Before, before, before Joel, Steph. Before Steph. It was. Yeah. It was him. Yeah. So, so, so what went into that? And also, mm -hmm. did you feel any pressure that this company, this million-dollar company, mm -hmm. is looking at you like, take us home, like, yeah. make us a household name? Yeah. Yo, were you in Vegas in 08 for the uh the, the USA team? I was. Right, you was on that team, right? I was. Yeah. Yeah, I was around. Um so yeah, that's when the that's when I signed the deal in Under Armour too. I met I met with uh Chris Stone who uh who started the Elite 24. Yeah. Um we were in Vegas. I just remember sitting down in the lobby. I remember meeting you. I remember meeting everybody early. I was young. I was, I mean, you know, I was just in the corner chilling just watching like <laughs> I was like, I'm going to see these niggas next year. I can't wait. Um so then, yeah, I got the deal done. Uh, we flew to Baltimore with uh, with Sonny. And then, you know, we was just sitting there. And I didn't really know what was going on. They was just like, yeah, like, we're going to make you our first signature basketball athlete. And I was just like, all right. <laughs> like, you know, I'm still not, it's still, like, it's not, pro it it's process, not, it's not yeah, processing yeah. in my head because yeah. it's a lot going on. I just went from not being able to get in school to, wait, I'm going to Rome? Wait, I got a <laughs> yeah. shoe deal? Like, all in the span of a month. So I'm just still just like, all right, like, all right, so when do we leave? Like, what is a passport? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Credit card. Like, That's you know, so credit card, debit. Video, like, you know, bro. I had to learn. I had to get ready. So it was just that like, fast. It was a lot. That's how it was for, for, for all us coming out at 18. Like, we went from basically taking SATs, going to school, mm -hmm. studying to credit cards, mm -hmm. passports, trying to, like. Financial yeah, advisors. We don't know nothing about none of this stuff. Yeah. Did you run into a lot of pitfalls 
early like that when you came out going to Rome and stuff like that, trying to deal with financial advisors and, and the agents and all that stuff? Nah, nah, nah. My team was good. I mean, when I first came out, you know, I had Sonny. So, yeah. and then I had Bill Duffy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I had my own financial advisor. So everything was smooth. Like, like everything, I already knew everything was – you know, from the jump was smooth. It just got crazy once I got to the NBA. Yeah. You know, yeah. with family. Um, and then just a lot of like distractions and, you know, I still went to Oak Hill, so I didn't really have the experience of, of a high school kid and then I had to go straight to Rome. So I'm missing out on a lot of things that yeah. are are, you know, mm-hmm. my peers were doing, like, so you know, you, college. So yeah, when I got a yeah. chance to get some money and got to the NBA It was over with. You know, it's over with. It, it was over with. You went to a school with sixteen People in this shit, yeah. in Christian class. school. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, yeah, like so I didn't, I didn't out? really get a chance to really have fun until, until you I got, got to, out the to the league. league. Yeah. And then now you, it's like you, you working so hard, but you want to go do everything because now you got the freedom, freedom. to do it. You mm-hmm. got a little money in your pocket. Who so, gonna really tell you something? So at you're, 18, 19 years old. Yeah. And I was in Milwaukee, so I was trying to find anything to do <laughs> at that time. <laughs> Nothing to do. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that what happened when you bored and what do you do in what do they do in Milwaukee? Like man, what's it known for? I mean, no, I mean great restaurants. Great restaurants for sure. I mean, I I know the city well, so it's some it's some spots out there. But when I first nice got there, I was going to Chicago a lot. Yeah. Chicago right, right down yeah. the street. You can yeah. take a drive down and then go shop. Forty five minutes. Do, come right yeah. Back. yeah. So what's it like, uh right, your your rookie year, mm-hmm. you dropped fifty five, right? Mm-hmm. Uh the seventh game. Yeah. What was it like in that, like, what was going through your mind that game? I mean, I had to get ready for the next one. I mean, my rookie year, I had Scott Skiles as my coach. He probably um, was tough. So, you know, he was very tough. Um, you know, I had vets, I had good vets like Kurt Thomas, uh, Jerry Stackhouse. So, it, Damn. I, like, you know, I, did, I wasn't, it wasn't, like I said, I couldn't progress a lot of things because, like I said, I just came back from Rome. I didn't play all year. Damn, I went 10th. Damn, I'm starting. Like, damn, you know, it's not, it wasn't like a celebration. It yeah, was, so everything was like, moving so fast. Everything was moving was so fast. Y'all, like, it, it, you didn't, you I didn't have time. Game? Do you remember that game? No, nah, I don't know. Nah, That's nah. crazy. I'm telling you, bro, I, I be trying to tell people, like, how hard it is for us. Like, everything's going by so fast. Yeah. Like, now that we're not playing like we used to, life and everything yeah. is slowing down. Yeah. But while we was in these golden years, we could mm-hmm. say, Everything was moving so fast, like he don't, he couldn't process it because it's just like one day you over here, the next day he here. Like just think about it, he different just, time zones, all types. Yeah, of he shit. just said he was in high school. He took the SAT. He had to do all this stuff. They wasn't allowing him <clears throat> to go to college. Yep. So he had to go to Rome. He go play in Rome. That's done. Then all of a sudden he's drafted. And he's starting for the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm-hmm. As a yeah, as a rookie. As a rookie. Yeah, as a rookie. Like you ain't what, got no time to. But you uh, 19, I was 19, 19, 19 years 19. old. That's crazy. And I didn't play at all the year before in, 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 in Rome. And that's what I was going to say before we got to Milwaukee. Like the fact that you didn't play in Rome and still went, 10. Still went yeah. 10. Before we get into that, right? The workouts was crazy. This, this, this is what niggas don't talk about. BJ, I want to know your honest opinion. In my personal opinion, 2009. Is the most slept on draft class in NBA history. Let me give you a rundown who's in this 2009 draft class, all right? You want you, you want to pull it up? I got I got it here. So this is just some of the some of the standouts that was in the 2009 draft class. Keep in mind, nobody talk about it. Blake Griffin, okay. James Harden, Tyreek Evans, mm-hmm. Steph Curry, DeMar DeRozan, Damn. Drew Holiday, Hashim Jeff the Teague, beat. Hashim the Beat, Pat Bev, of course yourself. Who? B. Oh, it sounded like you said another name. Nah, nah. Of course, 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 B. Jennings, Taj Gibson, Damari Carroll. Like, I know that nobody talks about Darren Collison. The, Darren Collison. Nobody really talk about the 09 draft class as far as, you know, I talk about 03. You know, I talk about 96, right? You know, I talk about like these certain draft classes. 09 right. is not talked about. But y'all had a lot of guys, bro. Yeah. Like a yeah, lot of guys. Yeah. That's a stacked draft class, bro. That is. They're all turned into shit. So, bro, it was he, one, Danny bro, Green was in that draft class as well. I forgot about Danny Green. Bro, it was one workout that I was waiting on and I killed and they didn't pick me. Who was that? That was the number eight pick. 
I swear I thought I was going to the Knicks. New York? Yeah. I got I was ready for that. Oh, that's your boy. Because that's um that's when they had Dan Tony. Oh, that and then Tony liked that. to run. Yeah. That would have been good. That, that would have been great. At that time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, circled that. Damn, so you would have been a Nick. So so what do you think this 09 draft class ranks amongst like the rest of the talked about draft classes? We definitely got to be top five or top – I mean top five for sure. Top eight. Top eight? What class, oh, what class you got eight. over this? You got Kobe's in them. 96. Class, 96. You got – King Glass. Which was that, like 82? 2005 83? was, was crazy, too, though. You got, what was that? Who was that, Mike and him? Yeah, I was Mike and him. Same draft. Yeah, you got... Wait, that's uh, crazy because of, of them two players? Who who else is in that draft? Like, I need to hear more because these, these are a lot of names. It's a lot of names, bro. It's so not like, top heavy. But my class was, wasn't top heavy either. Mike had a good draft. I don't... I can't think of... I can't think of... Four better draft classes than that, though. I think That's they're, I th- if anything, they're class. four. Like if what? anything, they're four. Right? It's 82. Now, that's James Worthy. That's not the right one. It got to be with 80, 83. Because so they might have. James Worthy they played with a, Jordan. They might have. Uh, Michael Jordan was 85, 84, 85. 85? 84. 84. So, yeah, 84 draft class, the 96 draft class, 2003. And I got 09. I got y'all at four. Dang. That's so- Nigga, it's been a million drafts. Remember, look, they had Michael Jordan. Okay. They had Charles Barkley, right? Sam that- Bowie. <laughs> they had Hakeem Olajuwon in that draft. John Stockton in that draft, too. Right? They, they, that's what I'm saying. So that draft, they top three for sure. No way. Nah? Looking back, no. <laughs> no, you done with the you done with the eighties? I'm done with the eighties. Come on, ain't no man. way they draft. We done with the eighties. They draft class is better than who? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you get when you get down there, boy, it get a little shaky. Type Come on, two, you got go Jordan. You got though. Jordan Charles. Barkley, I just seen a post about two thousand five. Hakeem Olajuwon. Two thousand five. Who was that? Greg Oden. That was Chris that, Paul. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, <laughs> Darren oh, Williams, Bogan. You played CP, with Bogan, um, he was number one. Danny Granger, Gerald Green, Nate Robinson, Jared Jack. Yeah, yo, that's not a yo. Marvin Williams came off the bench that year. Yeah, and, yeah, and went to second. Oh, damn! You know what, bro? I might put y'all niggas at three. It's looking a little shaky, bro. Damn, damn. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yeah. Nigga, Come on, man. O four. O four wasn't like that, bro. I'm gonna keep it a bean. Oh, what? O four wasn't better than 09, bro. Dwight O four is not Can better than 09, 4? bro. O four, O four. Dwight, see O four. Dwight O four not better than 09. Nigga, they got they got like 30 guys, bro. So you, you got Chu, Ben Gordon, Sean Livingston, <laughs> Andre Gudala, Devin Harris, Andre Gudala, Lou Dane. Nah, y'all don't have enough. It's no. not enough, so bro. Ashton, have a... Al Jefferson, Josh, J. Al Jefferson. That's oh, get, that's get better. Yeah, get better. Get better. Get better. Get better. Role player. Tony yeah. Allen. Tony Allen. Kevin Martin. Oh, that's a sleeper right there. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, but his class nah. got a lot of. Yeah, bro. I think his class, his class got a lot more. more. His class got, like, franchise players, bro. That's Steph good, Curry changed right? the game. DeMar, the franchise guy. Hey, you yeah, got that's crazy. James. James Harden, the James. franchise guy. Blake James was the franchise guy. James a franchise guy. Blake, nigga, he what had are you talking who, about? Who? Do y'all know what franchise. James is? James is not a franchise guy. James who? Harden. James is a system. <laughs> he is a system. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? That was a crazy he shit. He is not a that was he, crazy what? shit James Harden ever said. James that is was a wild, system. Bro. James, you know you're my nigga, but you wild. You wild bro. He ain't no dog on franchise. He's bro, a they, system. They got, boy, they got like six hey, franchise players in this your draft. Your boy Hashim to beat. Hashim was crazy at UConn, though. Hashim was That's crazy. That's a good question. Top five draft classes. Y'all got to be. I mean, look at it. They might be top five draft class, to be honest. Nigga, look like they three. They yeah. L- yeah, I take that. Yeah, back. I say we yeah. just look at it though. Yeah. Like, I take it back. I say top eight. I I get them top three. Damn. Yes. Yeah, look who they bro. They got Steph Curry. He, he arguably got to be the greatest point guard. That's what BJ say. BJ say he he, he put him over, my, so, over over Magic. He got to be the greatest. So point they always guard. consider the I ain't got Mike in my the two thousand the worst draft class. 2000 is the they, worst draft class? That's what they always say. What's the 2000 draft class? Can you pull that up? 
Shout out to Nick, by the way, man. He he doing this <laughs> literally doing uh, on the drop of a dime, man. Shout out my boy Nick in the cut. Nick, 2000 Nick, draft class. Nick, Nick low-key is stenographer. Throw me swift. Dad, why they got to do my nigga Kenyon like that, though, bro? Nigga <laughs> <laughs> Kenyon, number one overall pick. They said this is oh, class. Crawford, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is kind of crazy. He Shout don't out D-Miles. D-Miles was tough. Jamal Crawford was tough. Deshaun Stevenson. Um, Hold on, y'all forget about Donnell Harvey, AT. Mike Miller, he won rookie of the year. Hito, shout out to Hito Turkoglu. Don't, don't, don't. Do Quinn Richardson, too. yeah, this kind of weak. I ain't gonna hold you. Dang, yeah. how you yeah. gonna say they, that to Quinn? They rank that shit the worst everywhere. Shout, shout, shout out to them, like it's some cold individuals, bro. The but, niggas we naming is cold, bro. It's the niggas we skipping. It's the fifteen niggas so, we skipping over. Jamal Crawford. The, so the best player on this is Jamal. The best player on where? If you rolling on, off the ball, on yeah. This list. On the list is Jamal Crawford. If we talking about what, just like the the best hooper. He the best wow. hooper. Who had the best career mm-hmm. on this list of draft class? Uh, uh, probably uh, Kmart. Kmart. Uh, Kmart. Or Hito. Jamal Crawford. Yeah, Jamal, Jamal Crawford. It's Jamal. Oh, he did get six men of the year. Like three times. A couple times. Like three times. Yeah. It might as well name that motherfucker yeah. goddamn. Yeah. He's averaging 20 off the bench. All right, bro. I, 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 I ain't mean to do this side quest, but I just wanted to give that 09 mm-hmm. class the respect you deserve. But as we mentioned, you, you go to Milwaukee, 10th overall pick. Yeah. And you barely even play. Let me ask you the biggest difference. Like the question that I don't get to ask a lot of pro players mm-hmm. is what I think a lot of people want to know. I know, like, when an average nigga get life changing money, they life change because friends and family assume mm-hmm. that they're entitled to so much. Yeah. yeah. Only one percent of the world will ever be in a situation that y'all was in to where one point in time you had nothing, and then the next day you woke up, you obtained millions of dollars. How does that affect your everyday life, bro? Who's coming? Is it friends? Is it is it cousins you never heard of? Like, hey man, how, how you been? Like, nigga, I don't even know. Like, like, what is that like, bro? Like, do you change your number? Like, what the fuck goes on? Uh, man, I mean, you know, that was one of the reasons, you know, I had to walk away from the game too because wow. of family and friends, um, and just off, just it, it got too too much about money. Um, and you know, when, when ba- basketball is my freedom and basketball is my therapy. So when I'm between those lines, I'm not thinking about anything. Yeah. Um, but once basketball becomes a job and you know, people are, you know, when people look at you as, you know, a job and ATM, you know, yeah, ATM, then, you know, it kind of gets like depressing. I mean, no matter who you are, like, yeah, you know, like true. you don't want to be looked at as, you know, like a cash cow. So um, or some work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or some work, you know. The phrase of the day. Uh, so the biggest thing I would say is, you know, you got to stay spiritual. You know, you got to um, keep the right people around you that can help you, that are adding. Adding um, value to you, your life. Yeah, adding value to your yeah. life. The moment you stop um, having fun with it. Yeah, and, and, and be okay to say no. Yeah. Like, it's all right to say no. Did like that take they, some time? Huh? Like, learn... Was it easy to say no to family and friends and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, early, yeah. For real? Yeah, yeah, for me because, yeah. I mean, I just, I, you know, first time I had had it and was able to do something with it. And, like, you know, I thought I was, I thought that was um, showing love. But actually yeah. it's not really showing love. It's actually, you're actually, like, you're, you're actually. You're hurting. Yeah, yeah. You're hurting people, yeah. Yeah. But I don't think people understand it, though. Like, they feel like, you know, I had a lot of, <clears throat> I had people tell me, like, Man, you don't really care about me. How you say you love me? We family or, you know, we cool, we friends. And when I need you, you don't want to give me no money. And That's I'm crazy. Like, mm-hmm. That don't mean I don't care about you or, you know, don't love you. Mm-hmm. It's just like, no, I earned this. Do you know how hard I had to work mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to obtain what I got? And you want this because you don't want to work and you want me to just give it to you. Like, <clears throat> and when you went home night after night having to deal with stuff like that, did it kind of turn you off from wanting to be around people? You want to be a loner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like to sit in the house. Like, that's why I went to China and yeah. played. Like, that's why I went overseas back to Russia. Like, I was always trying to find a way to get away to from get everybody. Away. Like, because it was just annoying. Yeah. Like, and, yeah. you know, it's just like, <laughs> you know, I just be like, yo, what do you do? Every Like, what do people do? When you come back, is it that's like a crazy. dark cloud is, yeah. when you go overseas? And you and you experience that, then come back. Is it like? Yeah, I mean, man, China, man. If I didn't go to China, I wouldn't have started Tough Crowd. So like, I, I needed oh, that shit. like three months. So like, because I saw how big our culture was, 
Um, you know, they dress, you know how they dress, they love hip hop and yeah. you know, they love our culture. So when I came back from there, I was like, man, I gotta start a brand, like, you know, and, and I was still flipping up and down about, about if I wanted to play basketball again. Stuff, yeah. So you mentioned that though, and, and I just wanna ask, like when you say that side of the game, the the distractions or just like friends and family asking for things, you say it, it damn near drove you to stop playing. What do you mean by that? You mean it got so overwhelming? You was like, "Yo, if I'm not in this, if I'm not, if I don't have this job no more, yeah. maybe y'all will fall back." Was it like that type of mindset? It, well, like you know, in Detroit when I was when I tore my Achilles, yeah, you know when I, well, I um, that. Yeah, you know, I, that was the first time I had to sit down ever in my career and like really had to, you know. So I was I had like a year left on my contract. You know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to save. I'm trying to figure out what's next in life because I don't know. And just certain things that was going around with my family and just certain things that I was hearing about how people felt about me that I was doing for them um, really hurt me. Yep. So, yeah. And it came from somebody that was really close to me. So yeah. that really just took me to a dark place. Like I was Shit. dark, like just on some like, I don't, like, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, and it's like, like I just didn't care. Even with Dwight, like even if it's deals on the table and it's a bunch of people just keep hitting you up, hitting you up. This nigga will be like, yo, you know what? I'm not doing it. Cause, Cause it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. You know, people wanting something from you. It's it's not no genuine. like it's no it's it's not you want genuine people, yeah. genuine yeah. things and not people just coming around and wanting things because of what they see you have and going overseas and getting away from just the it seemed like it's a different energy. Mm -hmm. So I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So when you were when you were overseas away from the game, was that what allowed like how did you come up with the the concept tough crowd? Yeah, like is name. that how you come up with the name? Where did the name come from? Mm -hmm. Um Well man, I, you know, when when you create these things, you know, like at the end of the day we can sit up here and say, you know, who did this and who did that, but at the end of the day, you know, we create a lot of these things that uh, come upon us so yeah. you know a lot of it is you know when I went overseas I had to look myself in the mirror um, had to do a lot of uh, deep diving into soul myself searching. and soul yeah. searching getting closer with God and you know just start understanding like you know all right I did this all right you know I can change it like you know next chapter this and that making sure I'm never gonna do this again so it was just, and then being in China, it was like, it's a tough crowd. Like, I couldn't stand, uh, you know, understand the language, yep. you know, oh, yeah. anything like that. So yeah, I'm just yeah. like, you know, it's a t I'm the only black person in in this city. Yeah. So it was just a tough crowd. And then that's when um, I, brought, I was buying pro club shirts first, and then I was uh, uh, putting tough crowd on the collar. Then, you know, that's when everybody started doing the selfie thing. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. selfie. So, yeah. that was, yeah. so that's how I started marketing it. By myself, uh -huh. I was just like, yo, every time you put it on, smart, just right. make sure you just, you know, it's just yeah, something. Take a selfie, yeah. yeah, take a selfie back there. That's yeah. tough, man. Because right. you can't miss it. It's on the, on the collar, you can't miss it. Yeah. So you mentioned tearing your Achilles. It's one yeah. of the craziest injuries. Yeah, man. Yeah. How was the process of like, did, did the injuries lead to you stop playing as well? No, no, it wasn't that. I just got into other things. Yeah. Mm. Like, like, man, I was, I'm going through a lot of things off the court. I'm having, you know, children, you know, I'm trying to find a place to live, trying to buy myself something, you know, cause the first couple of years of my career, I was just making sure everybody else was good. Yeah. And Which when was, you get yeah. injured, you get time to sit <clears throat> and really learn yourself. I feel like. Yeah. Learn yourself. Start learning other people. You start observing. Yeah, you um, see everything. You know what I'm saying? You just start seeing things that you didn't see because, remember, you're moving so fast in the NBA. Like, bro, you got 82 games. You don't have time to be, you know, worrying about this at home. Like, you're not even home half the time. Yeah, like, yeah. you're on the road a lot. Yeah, so, yeah. when, you know, I'm laid up in, in the house with my foot up and trying to figure out and I'm watching, you know, Stan Van Gundy give Reggie Jackson 80 million, you know, I'm sitting there, you know, like, damn, all right. Like, where do I go now in my life? In, in respect to Reggie yeah, and no, everything, sure, but, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm just, yeah, in, in, I'm in just, you know, just like, damn, all right, well, what's next for me? Obviously, because you, you're the point guard on that roster. So if you're on a team and you see the other point guard on that roster get 80, then you like, they obviously ain't got plans for me or, or, or they got some you know? shit going on. So yeah. they ain't got nothing to do with Reggie, but that's yeah. how the, that's, that's the business. Yeah. I want to ask you about Detroit. You played with Detroit after Milwaukee. 
What was it like playing for Stan? Because we hear from you, mm -hmm. and then we heard from Gil. Everybody mm -hmm. got a different version yeah. Yeah. of playing for Stan. What's your version of playing for Stan? Did, did y'all was y'all rocking knee braces in practice, going a hundred miles an hour? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, we for sure were. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, we, for but, sure. we for sure were. <laughs> but no, nah, playing. You know, I played for Scott Scowls. Uh, uh, you know, early in uh, Milwaukee. So, you know, he was very structured. So, you know, I, uh, you know, I like coaches that are, you know, very structured and things like that. So, playing for Stan, I loved it. Um, just the fact that, you know, we were well prepared, you know, um, you know, I was, you know, fighting for a contract, of course, yeah. and trying to get so, you know, I was doing everything. And, you know, that's when I was turning the table in my career, understand, too. So, you know, everything that he did, you know, I can't, you know, I, I don't have anything. Yeah, I don't think say. Stan was a bad coach. I think that he had you very well prepared. Yeah, Talk very, about very well prepared. Talk about what you said on the, um, the OG's podcast when you said he had like a, he made y'all prepare for every player. He did. Every single player. Like, that's even what I'm saying. Even people not getting in. Even people don't that's care. not getting he might. in. <laughs> he might. That's what, that's what coaches, that's what yeah. Stan is saying. He might get in. You don't know, so you want to be prepared. So that's one, you know, great thing that Stan did. Now, what I, what I was saying about Stan in our situation mm -hmm. is he had lost his voice with the team mm -hmm. over time. Okay. Stan is a great coach. Mm -hmm. He, Like I said, the preparation, the X's and O's, he going to have you knowing everything. Now, did we practice a lot? Hell yeah. Did we have to go hard and practice? Hell yeah. But that was his way of preparing us for the game. You can't take that away from him because he knew that if we went so hard in practice, then the games was going to be easy. But – I think the problem was the fact that we was playing 82 games a year, and that's that's wear and tear on your body. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know we we back then we wasn't thinking about longevity in that standpoint. Like if I play these games like this, it's gonna hurt my body down the line. We just thinking we could play till mm -hmm. till whenever. Yeah. Well, listen, man, we used to have some crazy <laughs> practices. Man, we had shoot around at remember shoot arounds in the hotels. And then yeah, they used so to like and, and the, 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 the draw the tape. tape. Yep, the draw the tape. The yep, and then you could put your knee pads on and and then put your shoes on too. Bro, what? We yes, doing walkthrough, and you better go hard. <laughs> or, or what though? He's Shoot me. Shit. Or you ain't ready to play there. What would he say? Huh? What would he say? Oh, we'll be here until the bus leave, uh, until the bus comes in, until y'all figure it out. Those, yeah, don't play around. Do not play around and shoot yeah, around. Don't play around and don't walk through. Huh? Sound like a Karen. No. He he he's a, a Karen. He sounds like a Karen. But, but we'll be here to the bus. That's some uh, Karen shit. A well prepared, <laughs> oh God, bro, a well -prepared that's some Karen, Karen. Shit. Like, bro, just think about this though. I bet you everybody on their team knew every player, every play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, like for real, he had us prepare for every single no, team. Let me let me let me get a stand practice story though. Like, what's some shit that went down in practice? Because. You played for Milwaukee first, then came there. Mm -hmm. So was it anything going on? Like, man, what the fuck we got going on? Like, these niggas out here wilding. It's practice. Because Gil said leaving, leaving D.C. and I then think, coming there, he like, yo, what the I think fuck? The I think the doing? craziest one is when we be going through shoot-around, yeah. right? And then we'll walk through and we'll be sitting there for like an hour. <laughs> then they'd be like, all right, sprint. Yeah. We have to play. Wait, five everybody five be five sitting there just chilling, chilling, like chilling, like yeah. walking through, chilling. Then he'd be like, all right, now everybody go through it hard. And then the first time you don't go, he'd be like, all right, y'all not ready to play. Nah, we just sit it. here and stood here for 45 yeah, we, minutes. We'll go through all the plays. <laughs> like, we'll go through every single yeah. option. No, for real. Every single option. Like, walk through it first. Yeah. So imagine walking through a team's whole offense, mm -hmm. every single player. And then all of a sudden he's saying go game speed. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then the other team, they're really trying to score. And we have to really stop them on defense. <laughs> this they, is real life yeah. shoot around. It's some yeah. college shit, bro. Yeah. No, said, this is some stand shit. They said you used to be college. fucking up Marcin Gortat. In practice, <laughs> yeah, they said he used to be elbowing. Nigga, he used nigga to, had to. I, Shit, oh, no, I was, wasn't gonna play. No, I was a, uh, I was a wild boy. <laughs> I threw a lot of elbows, and you know, I, it's just the time that we, that I started playing in. Like we was a, it was a physical era. Era, mm -hmm. like it wasn't like I was doing it because I was trying to like bully people. It was just yeah. that's what I was taught: throw yeah. elbows, get yeah. niggas up off you, dunk yeah. on niggas. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was taught. 
So shoot, if I was taught to do Euro steps and get get around, <laughs> that's what I probably would have did. But so, so how, how was you able to score so well in an era where being a smaller guard at a time where it was still physical, like he was talking about? Because for you still putting up fifties and thirties and forties against when defense was still pretty pretty aggressive and pretty strong, like how how did you go about that? I was six one one seventy. You know what I'm saying? I was just fat, smaller fast and quicker, and fast just fast shit. and quick, just fast and quick. Um, and, and then just, I mean, but just everything in Europe that I learned, man. That whole year in Europe, though, even though I didn't play, I was working on my game every day. Yeah, like every day. Like my agent, they made sure I had a trainer with me the whole time. So working on my game how, every day. How was it like playing in that? Because in that era, it was only like ten people averaging over twenty, and. Two, from 2010 to 13, so people always talk about the differences of the game. Like, mm -hmm. how was it, like he said, the scoring process. Like, you was one of the best scorers in this era where they say it was harder to score. So, like, do you see, like, later on in your years, was there a difference in the gameplay? Was it harder to score, easier to score? Um, I mean, I think watching Gil, Gil started all that. The, the scoring like for the point guards yeah. like you know like I, like I didn't tap into you know wanting to be a scoring like my first year at Oak Hill I was a point guard then my second year when I saw Gil the Hibachi and all that shit I was like oh yeah I, I gotta <laughs> score yeah, so you know what I'm saying like and then so yeah like and then you know watching Steph score like that come into the league like you could just see it's like changes it's like turning. okay like it's, it's about to start turning that's yeah. when the scoring went up. I think when Steph got into his bag, mm -hmm. Steph, like you got who else on there? Monte Ellis is Dame. on there. Dame, Dame on there. You know 12. what's crazy? I think that Russ, Russ, that every position has its highlight in the history of basketball, to where it's the focus. It's it, like guards are scoring. And then at one point it was center scoring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then it was. You know, wings. you got pet wings and yep. you got Shooting. power it's forwards. Cycles. Like, it's just crazy. I like, think right now it's the center's time, though. Cause I, you got I, think is is com, I think centers it's is, point guard is, still, is coming back coming back around. Yeah, it's centers coming centers around. Centers coming back around because you just you think about it, Wimby just got in. So mm -hmm. give it about two, three more years, mm -hmm. all these centers that's still coming in and growing, they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I say centers is coming up, but I still say it's point guards now. Because even – the teams that got good centers, they still got scoring guards. Like Joel still got Tyrese. He got he got Jokic still Max. got Jamal Murray. Like they still got niggas who can go for fifty. And All he, them niggas can yeah. go for fifty. Yeah, and he's big to shooting threes now. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's like it's like every position game. can play behind the three. Speaking That's so crazy. Speaking of the All Star game, right? Cause I always thought you should have been an oh, All Star. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know this year, um, you were snug. I feel like you were snug. What year is this? This is twenty 12, 2013, Drew Holiday got it over you. Okay. Yeah. What's yeah, your yeah, thoughts? He's on that? Yeah, that nigga, yeah. Um, so I remember that year because I, I yeah, I outplayed Drew that, that that year. Yeah, I was cooking. Record and, was and better. I think my team was better, right? Drew got the nod over you. I think at the time he was averaging like seventeen. And you, and you was averaging, averaging twenty one before the all -time Twenty one and you had a better record. Mm -hmm. But this was the one year that Drew was uh was all star of the year. He was in he was in Philly, then they traded him the, the next year. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, so, like, that was clearly the year that you were supposed to get your All-Star. So, like, after you got snubbed or even through that process, like, what was going on through your mind? Did you think you was going to be All-Star that year? I mean, I mean, to me, I should have been an All-Star my second year if I didn't break my foot when I came back after my rookie year. Um, that that was the All-Star in, yeah, in L.A., I think. Yeah, I came back, I had broken my foot. But, I mean, you know. That's crazy. Man, man. I, wasn't, I wasn't really, like, you know, I was – you know, I wasn't really that marketable. Like I, well, I, I would always say little things, and you know, talking about like comments and stuff. Yeah, like that. comments and stuff. You know, Drew's more, you know, clean, yeah. clean yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, I was, I'm more rowdy. Like I'm more, you Do know. You, so, so I feel like that hurt me a lot. Yeah. Do you think looking looking back on um, your career? Do you think there's a lot of moments that you like? Do you regret? You know, some things in your career are it's like. You know what? I was young. Um, the things that I was going through, and the things that happened, I take it. I take it like you know what. I came in young. I didn't really know any better, mm -hmm. and I done grown past it. 
Um, no, I, I don't regret nothing because I wouldn't be who I am today. Right. So um, I'm still being able to tell my stories yeah. um, through the things that you know I did make mistakes on. So uh, being confident, being able to talk about my mistakes and still be able to push forward, um, I feel like my second career going to be better than my first. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this next yeah. chapter, I'm just excited and ready. So, yeah. you, know, you know, I ain't got what? no regrets because, you know, I allowed it. Like I said before, like when you look yourself in the mirror and you realize you allow certain things, uh, it's like, all right, like, you know, you just got to look yourself in the mirror and keep pushing. You know, that's so crazy. I, I just really, f I, I believe that, you know, all NBA players, like, we have this mindset because of our time in the NBA, mm -hmm. like we have like this, I feel like we got this crazy gene inside of, well, people might say we crazy, but we got this gene inside of us where it's like, we really believe that anything we do, mm -hmm. we can be successful at it. Yeah. Like no matter what he just said, like listen to It took what that thought said, process like, to get to where you got. Yeah, yeah, so now it's like, okay, yeah. you know what? Okay, basketball over with. Mm -hmm. I got to move on, I, and I know I could do it. Yeah. And it's like we just had this – because we, we done been through this so much in our lives as basketball players, like, you know, the next game, mm -hmm. the next game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The next we don't game, have time to – We don't have time to, to worry sit. about the last and game. And so yeah. I think we take that attitude with everything that we do in life, and a mm -hmm. lot of times people think that we might not care – about certain things because of how we approach and how our attitude is towards when something may end. Yeah. Whether it might be a relationship or, you know, a business, and we, we take it as, you know, it hurt, but we're going to take it on the chin. We're mm -hmm. not going to show everybody how mm -hmm. we feel it. Next game. But it's the next game. Yeah. We got to keep That's moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's just crazy just to hear, you know, all the athletes and everyone saying this same, same. thing. Like, we all had this mindset. Mm -hmm. nah. And I feel like it's a crazy gene mindset. Like, it's all embedded in our DNA. But we've seen so much. Like, we, you know, you know the type of places basketball has taken us? Yeah, life. everywhere. Like, we we've seen so much. Like, we're around billionaires. We're, we're around everything. Yeah. So it's like when seen the ball stops. That's why I don't like when I see guys, like, done hooping. They don't. They, you know, they be like, don't know what they want to do. Or it's yeah. like, man, what you mean? You know how much stuff you've seen in your life? Yeah. Like, get back out there. Like, even if you got to, you know, get off the grid for a little bit. But come back, though. Like, you can come back. You're right. Like, everybody it, come back. It just take, I, I think for all of us, it just take a second. Because when you're done playing, you start to miss those little things. You got to think. We've been doing this. Yeah. Forever, since I was kids. Like he yeah. been, he been since high school. Since high school, <clears throat> we done came out of high school yeah. and had to play professional basketball for a livelihood. This is what we had to do. So every single day, we not think about nothing but hoop, and then we not we can't think about nothing else because we're so focused on trying to be a killer. When you a killer, you can't think about. Nothing but killer. You can't think about not, no nothing else. Like off the court shit, I know people always say stuff about off the court issues and all that stuff. But no, when you a killer, you thinking about what you're doing on the court. And sometimes you, you might have some of these issues off the court. But like for real, the only thing you locked in on is that doggone game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You focus. Now, I do want to ask you before we get out of here. We had you for a minute. It's a few things that you said. That's out of pocket, bro. So, so you don't have he said he was out of you don't pocket. have MJ in your top five. Mm -hmm. Explain why, bro. Because when I when I heard that, I thought it was crazy. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Uh, I don't have MJ in my top five because when I was seven to eight years old, that's the last time he won a championship, and that's I didn't really understand basketball like that. So I didn't really start loving the game or started really knowing the game until, you know, I saw AI and and Kobe Bryant in the early 2000s and guys like that so that's why he can't be i respect it yeah you know i can go watch a highlight tape but, but what i saw and what i really felt and understood it was like you know you know it's the steph curry's it's the you know lebron james it's the um kobe bryant's Shaq's, and kd like you know so you you just said from a standpoint of 
I watch these dudes. I yeah. know for a fact I can. I I don't have to go off what they said. I'm going yeah. off of what I know. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's just every era though. Yeah, no, like I mean, I don't expect if my son said his favorite player is Michael Jordan, I'm like you, 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 you can't. Shit. Like, you, you, don't even know. Like, you, you don't even know. know. Like, you don't even know. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I expect I, I you know when other kids are coming in the NBA and they be like, yo, my favorite player is Paul George or my favorite player is this and that. It's like, yeah, I get it. Like, yeah. this is, this that's is what they, they grew up on. Yeah. Like, that's what they yeah. know. Is it, is, oh, my, my I say you can't even get mad at that. A lot of people get upset when people get a top fives and who they, but you know, he's being realistic. He's going by what that's he real. really saw. Yeah. Like he saw these So players stop saying play. Hakeem the GOAT then, bro. You ain't watching. No, I no, never no. said Kareem, that Kareem. He's the GOAT. He said Kareem, Kareem, Kareem. No, I said, say what I'm saying. Stop right, saying Kareem. Right, right, he ain't that. watching play. Yeah, he like, he don't know what to do. The thing is for me, <laughs> the thing is for me, as somebody that's that's been playing and hasn't really stopped playing, like saying who some, how, like somebody is the GOAT I've been playing since I was 18, bro. Yeah. I didn't. Ne I never really saw Michael Jordan play. Yeah. So for me, I don't. The only reason I be putting people like Kareem and stuff as the goal because <laughs> of centers is because they centers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's like, shoot, I gotta hold it. Nigga bias, man. <laughs> too, man. At least you yeah. openly bias, bro. At least you openly bias. What you mean, like? But <laughs> I'm saying, e even if I was not being biased, like just Kareem. Them them stats though, them when stats, we showed them, like, bro, when you look at it, you look at his stats, like that's why I can say it's something that he did that he had to be great at to have. All these stats, this nigga look his stat, his stat. <laughs> like they crazy. Look like a damn. It looked like the dictionary. Like yeah. he got ten pages on the dictionary. But what I'm saying is, if you ain't see that, that shit just look like numbers to me. It just look like a bunch of numbers to me. Like you I can't recollect. Right. Like the nigga got thirty some thousand points. I can't think of one. Yes, you can. That damn hook. That's a lie. He you the know, only nigga. I know the move. I know the move. He the only nigga the shooting hook shots from the three point line. That nigga wasn't shooting them from the three point line, bro. Damn man, see, foot see, on the that, line. See, that's why you can't believe niggas. See, <laughs> when we hear, foot on the when line, we hear stories about like Wilt scoring a hundred, I don't believe that, bro. I, I just that don't, I don't shot, believe was it. Was it foot on the line? I don't line. believe Wilt scored a hundred, bro. I don't deep, believe it, bro. I believe it. Where he was shooting the hook shot I don't shot think from, they was keeping track of the deep, score, though, though BJ. Was, I don't believe keep that it shit, bro. Snipe, if you tell me you never seen that commercial where he doing that hook shot by the three-point line, nigga? A Kareem commercial? Nigga, how old is a Kareem commercial? Think about that though. None of us never seen. You know what I'm saying? Play. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, come on, man. Okay, you also said though. Did you say Scotty shouldn't be top seventy five because he was a Batman? I mean, because he was a Robin. Did I say that? You said that today. <laughs> you said that today. You said that today. Hey, we was sipping on that. We, we at the arena. I'm listening. I'm listening to this thing. He said, "Yeah, yeah, Scotty, play defense, nigga. You, you, you a Batman?" I said, "Hold on, this nigga said Scotty ain't top seventy five. No, wait. Oh no! I think it's because I think wait no Dennis Rodman said he would lock up LeBron James. He said something. that, <laughs> and, and, and then he said Scottie Pippen something would would lock up LeBron or something. I'm mm. just like I'm like. Relax. Do you what you think about that? You think he's just capping? Yeah, they capping. Yeah, capping. Yeah, they capping, bro. Come on. Before we get it out, before we get you out of here, uh, what I needed? Who's your goat, BJ? Who's your goat? We we get it going. Who's my goat? Who is your greatest basketball player of all time? Of all time. Who you go and why? I'm going to go Kobe Bryant. Um, Kobe. Because he, you know, he made me love the game even more. Um, growing up in L.A., watching Kobe win rings and, you know, from the tights to everything, it was just, you know, he was dialed in. So the way people feel about Michael Jordan, that's how I feel about Kobe Bryant. Respect. See, he giving, he, that's he, real. he's giving real answers. Like, <clears throat> when most people think about, when they talk about GOAT, they always saying, well, because this person could do this move. Yeah. Yet. But he's saying, like. Impact on my life. The impact mm -hmm. that he yeah. had on my life is why he is the greatest. It's not because he shot this one shot so good. It's because the way he had his shorts, the way he tied his shoes. Made me want to hoop. Made me want to. It made a, me love the game. Yeah, like at, like you know, life. like so. Like I know. Like when when the that Afro Kobe between. situation when Kobe yeah. passed, that that really <clears throat> that had to hurt a lot because this is somebody that you idolized growing up. Yeah. 
everything yeah. about him, you know, you watched. And then you actually was able to witness him mm -hmm. up close. Like, what kind of impact did that have on your life? I mean, he was the reason why I made my mom wake up every morning and take me to the L.A. Fitness to work out at 5 o'clock because I heard he was doing it. Yeah, like, tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was having, like, um, I think we got invited to watch him work out one time in high school, like 5 a.m., like, you know, so just hearing all those workouts. I remember we was going to the Compton swap meet, uh, me and my teammate back in the day in Compton and Mingus, and we was going to buy black tights just to look like Hope. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just everything, like the fro, like, you know, like, just – yeah, the work ethic, just the determination to not, never want to give up, like the drive is just different. Like, and to be here in L.A. and watch that, it was like, yeah, different. Dog. That's Ooh. crazy, man. Just so you know, there's a lot of kids out there that was doing the same thing Facts. that you was doing the, with Kobe. Yeah. They doing it for you, man. The Snipe. same way, man. The, I'm a le I grew up lefty, 5'9". I'm like, yo, <laughs> BJ. He did. No bullshit. Yeah. But the only thing him. happened, he started right. drinking protein shakes <laughs> and doing hella push up. Like that's why he looked like Herschel Walker. Like, oh, like for real, he like you have. Um, he's been speaking highly of you yeah. since we started this show, months before you even came on, and even reached out to come on. We didn't even know he could be a guest. No, thank yeah, you, we didn't. Thank at first, sure, we didn't yeah. even talk about having guests. So mm -hmm. this is why I'm saying like. He been, you know, speaking yeah. very highly of you. We all love your game, what you've been doing for the game of basketball itself. Not just that, but then how you've transitioned away from the game and you've done amazing because of your mindset. You know what I'm saying? I think that's important. Do you instill the same, the, the, the mindset, the, the attitude, the um, discipline, the – the structure, all those things that you have experienced in your lifetime, do you instill these things in your kids? Is this something like mm -hmm. when you get back from overseas or like, is it like, man, I got to tell them this. I got to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, my kids, they actually want me to go back and hoop. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, they want to see me hoop. But, man, I think just – being able to keep going. Um, I just had my kids with me at the Elite 24 a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. just seeing them, see me in a different light, you know, with the fashion brand. Um, my son, Legend, he wants to take pictures now. Yeah. You know, he wants to be a photographer. He likes fashion. My other son, he want, he's a lefty. Um, he wants to be just like me. So he chained on Rick Owens, <laughs> the whole nine. Um, but no, nah, man, just being able to still keep going, like, you know, in this era, you know, getting a lot of love, you know, mm -hmm. being able to tell my story on a podcast because one day they're going to see this. Yeah. So, and, you know, I do this for them yeah. so that they can have different opportunities and um, different things that they want to do in, in life because, you know, they might not want to play basketball. Yeah. But, yeah. hey, man, we got this fashion thing. Hey, your dad like music. Hey, you like media. You know, um, I got relationships with Dwight Howard. I got relationships mm -hmm. with Gilbert Arenas. You know, so I just keep my relationships and just make sure they see it. How was it? How was it being a father? Like, I don't. You know, for myself personally, I take pride in the fact that, you know, I'm a father and mm -hmm. I got a chance to really make an impact on my my own little tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, how does that feel like to be a, a, a father and a father figure, like that role model mm -hmm. for your for your seed? Well, for me, you know, growing up without one, you know, my mm -hmm. dad passed when I was eight. Oh, so, sorry to hear. Um, yeah. you know, my mom being the backbone and taking care of me and my brother. So... You know, I think, you know, for me, it's just giving them love. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anytime I can see them, you know, just give them love. Just, you know, of course, buy them whatever they want. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, um, you know, just putting them in, you know, certain, you know, just, you know, I just like to see what they like. You know, mm -hmm. I like to see what they vibe is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, they said they want you to hoop, man. Huh? They said they want to come on to the team. Yeah, yeah, they want me. You know, um, you know, like teaching my kids how to pray over their food. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's something that you know I'm trying to install right now. You know, knowing who God is, um, you know, having confidence in themselves, um, always staying hostile. You know, through it all, but you know, believing and trusting God. You know, mm -hmm. I want to really install God in my kids. Well, that's amazing, bro. 
Um, I know we about to, you know, we've been talking about wrapping up, but I did yeah. have, you know, a couple more like yeah. dealing with, you know, having the kids and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> as a as a father and, you know, trying to instill um, the knowledge of who God is and what mm-hmm. he's done in your life and just the experiences that you've had. Um, how how relieving is it when you see them actually like like you said when you teach them how to pray when they're praying back mm-hmm. or when they say hold up dad mm-hmm. let's make sure we pray mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before we eat mm-hmm. like how does that make you feel mm-hmm. it feels good i mean they're just tapping in yeah like you know yeah. um like just anything like hey yo like you know, they like to leave their food or, you know, around and then, you know, they clean they clean up after themselves mm-hmm. or, you know, not having to repeat yourself. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. sometimes you know, you have yeah. that little you know, you say, Hey, all right now like, you know, <laughs> and then they know what it is. Yeah. You know. My kids, you know, they like to play fight. You know, they think I'm their friend. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. you know, they think yeah. I'm the homie and it's yeah. like, nah, like my one son, I come down with a fit on, he'd be like Oh, look at bro. Bro think he got a fit on. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what you mean bro got a fit on? I'm like, yeah, I got a fit on. And then, and then right after that, he'd be like, yo, let me get that off you. <laughs> so, but nah, man, they like, you know, it's it's cool, man. It's, yeah, it's kids great. Kids bring you so much joy, man. Yeah. And, you know, they inspire you so much. <clears throat> and the last thing, you know, you, you spoke on this. Uh, you said you lost your father, you know, mm-hmm. at a very young age. Uh, yeah. My son, uh, his mom passed when he was six, and you know, for for me, you know, having him full time, uh, sometimes it is a struggle trying to understand, you know, what he's dealing with, mm-hmm. um, and how to help him deal with the loss of a, a parent at a young age. Mm-hmm. You know, how how did <clears throat> how did you handle or <clears throat> what would be, you know, some words of advice, uh, something that I can give to my son to kind of like, I know this is, you can't obviously go back and, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. get your parent and stuff like that, but just to kind of like help him, you know, with helping throughout his life, because I know he's, you know, that got to be a very traumatic situation. Um. Man, I mean, well, my mom, you know, she, man, she was the backbone. So she was very strong, you know, and she mm-hmm. did everything she could do. Um, I think the the one thing I will say my mom kept a, the one thing, one good thing my mom did do was she kept me around things I love to do. You know, basketball was one thing, you know, mm-hmm. she knew I loved to do. So she would sacrifice everything she had just to make sure that, you know, I had the shoes, I can, you know, go hoop, um, you know, might not have everything, but, you know, she made sure, you know, always had God in my life. Um, you know, she always tried to make sure, you know, we had the best. Like, you know, she moved us from L.A. to Orange County uh, when I was in the seventh, eighth grade just to get, you know, some some more diverse, mm-hmm. you know, going to school with white kids and, you know, being the only black kids there. So seeing things from a different um, angle and, and all and, you know, I think that's why I was so fearless. Yeah. Uh, being able to move around and being comfortable and, you know, always being able to have my own path because my mom was so fearless with me. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, you just got to be fearless with them. Yeah. Um, For you, real. Yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, I just feel like that's what really helped me. My mom, she she made sure, like, yo, go. Like, you want this? Like, go. You so, go get it. at 11, you know. You know, rent was getting paid for, you know, doing things. So I felt like the man. Like, I felt like Mm. the man of the house because I had a responsibility. So really didn't have no time to, like, you know, shed tears and things like that in my life. Man, man. I appreciate that, man. Well, sure. Thank you for coming on the show. No no doubt, man. man. Thank you, legend. And you the legend, bro. (laughs) Oh, you is the legend, man. So thank you again. And shout out to everyone who watched the show today. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. We need more subscribers, man. Yes, sir. Stop just watching the videos, <laughs> sending them to all your families and friends, and telling them to watch the show to see 
if the white go wear some more tight jeans and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> and snipe, <laughs> and snipe gonna wear some more of them uh, muscle tees. Some more muscle tees. <laughs> that nigga's wildin', bro. Uh, but you just Please. watched the greatest podcast ever, Above the Rim with Dwight Howard. Move real. We finna get him his own special Jersey side. Moo. Jersey Moo <laughs> side cam. And we got my boy Snipe in the building. Sure. And again, one of the greatest high school basketball ever players to ever grace the court. By the way, by a tough crowd, link gonna be in the description. We got you, bro. Yeah, y'all yeah, gotta check out Tough in. Crowd. It's nice, man. He gave us some some crazy candles. We got some swim trunks. I got some shorts at the crib, cut off shorts. My he got kid. another bag though. What's the other bag he got? I think they got two bags. Don't bag. worry about that. That's no, 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 for sure. That's for me. No. Herschel Sniper. I said I want it. I'm nigga just curious. Herschel Sniper. Herschel Sniper. Herschel Sniper. Ah yeah yeah. Go ahead wrap this shit. Listen, it's the greatest podcast ever. What we hear, no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil. We love you guys. Peace and love, and we out.